need a system-wide scan for a hard drive. Serial number 18. Sir, serial numbers have nine digits. This has two. A one followed by an eight, otherwise known as 18. Find it! Silo episode 9 is titled The Getaway, which prompts the question, is it possible to get away when you live underground in a sealed environment like the silo? To her credit, Jules makes a real go of it, and whether or not it's possible, this idea of getting away does create a great setup for this penultimate episode. Tensions are high for everyone involved, and it feels like something will have to give. The pursuit of Juliet keeps everything moving, and shakes details loose as the episode is forced to focus on one-to-one -one conversations between characters, with an emphasis on the cost of keeping a secret. Finally, in a situation where everything's collapsing around Jules, her pursuit of the truth about what happened to George and why Allison and Holston decided to go out to clean is the only thing she has left. Unless she can literally escape the silo, she'll eventually be caught and sent out. It's not a big surprise that Jules ended up on the walkway of the floor below after she went over the railing at the end of the last episode. She's battered, but it puts enough distance between them that she's able to get out of there before they can catch up with her. There is some suspicion that Billings might have let her go because no one knows he has the syndrome and lost his grip. This puts him in an interesting spot because he's gained some respect for Juliet and has started to recognize that there's something going on at Judicial that doesn't add up. When he goes home and explains to his wife what happened, she's almost relieved and tries to talk him into coming clean and leaving leaving the sheriff's department for good. They get into a fight, and he tells her a story about violently attacking another teenager who realized they were both hiding having the syndrome, and that points out just how far he'll go to protect his secret. His wife drops one of the episode's most cutting lines after he says he earned the job through his hard work. By simply responding, but you lied. Of course, this makes you think about the lies from IT and Judicial in the effort to protect the silo. But it also does a good job to highlight the stakes that are inherent in situations like these. She's right about the fates of the last two sheriffs and not wanting their daughter to grow up without a father. But preserving this lie is so essential to who he is, he can't accept a different path forward. So he decides to go try to catch Juliet so that he can make things right. After finishing up with the initial search, Sims goes to meet with Bernard. They start to discuss a plan to find Jules, and then Bernard gets distracted by a beacon on his desk that has started flashing. It has a chain connected to it, and it's marked with the number 18, which is a number we've seen before. It's the same number that was on George's hard drive. This thing is mysterious to the point that I don't know what to call it yet. The flashing light gives off signal or warning vibes, but we don't get a full explanation for what it is before the end of the episode. One thing you do get a good sense of, though, is that Bernard is concerned when he sees it flashing. And before he sends Sims away, he stresses, I hope you understand what we're facing here. And Sims gives a nod to acknowledge that he does, even if we don't. The thing about having the main character on the run is that it means that the investigation works to check in with all of the potential allies she's held on to throughout this first season. Judicial goes to visit a defiant walker, who declares that she has nothing to hide before letting them in. Sims goes to visit Pete Nichols, giving him the news in a somewhat unceremonious manner that his daughter and only living family member asked to go out. He follows that up with a direct threat invoking overzealous raiders, and Pete reminds him that he knows something about that already. Papa Nichols mentions a spot on the railing of the level 1 balcony that's been worn smooth from all the jumpers gripping the rail before they jump off, adding, thanks to your raiders, Jules is all I have left. The Doctor has become someone we're invested in, and so it matters when he poses the question, would you help the people hunting your child? Sims immediately responds that he would, claiming that no one person is more important than the 10,000 or the thousands more to come. This is exactly what we expect from this character, but there's also been an emphasis on how important his family is to him, and we get a hint of some internal conflict as he stares into the nursery and thinks about his next move. 
As we catch up with his wife and son on their way home, we find out that he sent some raiders to escort them. And it's somewhat surprising that she doesn't want to let them inside. You find out that she used to be a raider before she transferred to IT, and you get the sense that she has some feelings about that. When she enters the apartment, she notices the camera has been disabled, so she secures her son in his room and grabs a gun before searching the apartment. She notices the hard drive on the bed, and when she bends over to look at it, Jules comes up behind her with a knife. Sim's wife is a character we know nothing about, and the way he's been presented hasn't really sparked interest about his home life either. But Juliet's decision to hide in a place they wouldn't think to check makes for a memorable exchange. As she waits for the drive to load up, Sims' wife asks about the comment she made about nightmares, and Jules tells her about the raiders coming into their home and destroying it when she was a kid. She says that's judicial. That's who you used to work for and who your husband works for now. And the response is that her husband works for the good of the silo. To that, Jules points out that it's weird then that she doesn't believe in the good of the silo enough to let two raiders her husband sent into their apartment. And she comes back saying that her husband's not in control of everything that happens in the silo, and he's certainly not responsible for something that happened to Jules when she was a child. Elsewhere, Bernard signals that he's completely stressed out by pouring a drink and then pouring it back into the bottle. He looks at what I guess I'll call the fob and sees that it's not flashing anymore. And then Sims checks in to tell him about Lucas getting the message from the porter and then going to Jules' apartment. Speaking of that, after being sent away by one of his students from his PAC program when he tried to get into the apartment earlier, Billings waits for them to leave and sneaks back in. He rigs the door and then takes a closer look at the area where the camera is placed behind the mirror. And he finds a piece of two-way glass on the floor that they missed when they were cleaning up. He can't find anything in the apartment, but then he remembers finding the Pez dispenser in Doug Trumbull's medicine cabinet and goes looking at hers. He realizes he can pull it out of the wall and he finds the Georgia travel guide behind it. Back at his office, Bernard calls in Lucas and breaks the ice by asking him about sitting in the cafeteria looking at the lights in the sky. Then he tells him he knows exactly what happened in Jules apartment, only instead of calling it a camera behind the mirror, he says it was an air quality meter. And after he lays it all out, he asks Lucas what he did after the meeting. And when the answer is that he did nothing, he points out how that's a problem. The sheriff showed him a red level relic and he didn't alert anyone to this situation. He brings it all back around by saying that as an analytical person, what does he think the consequences should be for such an inaction? Lucas doesn't have an answer for this, so he threatens to send him to the mines or maybe a cleaning, and he twists the knife a little bit by saying that it was all because of a crush. After making the stakes clear, he finally browbeats the only possible piece of information that Lucas has out of him that the drive had the number 18 on it, and as soon as he hears that number, he rushes to the janitor's closet, where he tells the text to find it. While they're searching for the hard drive, Bernard says he's been very negligent in appointing a shadow, and that everyone had presumed it would be Sims. But he tells them he found out about the escort, and now he's not sure if he's the right person for the job. He drives this home by saying, we're facing extinction, and you chose to protect your family before the silo. Before Sims can respond to this, they get interrupted when they find out that the hard drive is in his apartment. Jules is able to get into the hard drive. She was able to figure out the password from Allison's notes. While she was looking at it, Sim's wife was starting to pick the lock on her cuffs. After scrolling through the files, Jules notices one that's named Start Here, and when she clicks on it, she sees a video message from George, which he starts by saying this is a video, at least that's what they called it in the before times. While she's distracted watching it, Sim's wife does get the cuffs off and grabs a hammer. She makes a very clear decision not to attack her, though. Instead, she tells her to stop and explains that as soon as she connected the hard drive, they'd be able to find her. So she has a choice now. She can run 
and try to get away or she can keep watching. And by the time Sims and the Raiders get there, we see that she has in fact left. While this is all going on, Billings is in her apartment looking at the book. We eventually see him bawling in Jules's room as he finishes looking at it, and then he decides to put it in the oven to destroy it. Before he does that though, he tears out a page which I couldn't figure out exactly which one it was. But as the book starts to burn, it starts to set off the fire alarms. From there, things really pick up. We meet a new character that passes a checkpoint using his IT badge. We find out he's on his way to Patrick Kennedy's apartment, where he meets Jules. He's absolutely reluctant to help until he recognizes that it's George's hard drive. He does what hackers do. He's able to bounce the signal somewhere else, and he's able to get things going so that she can continue watching George's message. Through that, she finds out that he did have a plan to use her initially when he went down to Mechanical, but in the process of that, he did end up falling in love with her. He also says that he found the door he was looking for, that it's huge, maybe 15 feet tall, that it's made out of metal, and that he couldn't get through it. But he adds, maybe you can. He points out that she's probably wondering what he did about the water, and says it turns out it was nothing to worry about. The important thing is that the door is down there, and that she has to find it. At the end, he tells her he's making the video in case he doesn't make it, but that people need to know why Allison Becker went out to clean. And he tells her to look at the Jane Carmody cleaning file, which is the same one that they found together when they first opened the hard drive. While that's going on, we see Sims and his wife talking, where he says he wishes he could have gotten there sooner, but she tells him that she's glad he didn't because she let Jules go. This is complicated because he gets pissed and she says she did it because she knew he was on his way with a group of raiders with their fingers on the trigger. He assures her that he had given them orders not to fire, but she comes back saying that she's been given those orders and she knows what can happen. She ends the conversation saying we have one goal, one ambition, we will not lose sight of that. Which definitely makes you wonder what that goal is. While it definitely involves him taking over for Bernard, it doesn't really feel like they're trying to do that in order to maintain the status quo. It does give the impression that there's more to this Sims character than we've been led to believe. And he does confess that sending the escort might have messed up their plans, which makes her look worried, and she asks exactly what he said. And when their son comes up, we do see that he is affected by what he saw when Jules was in the apartment. The episode comes to a close after we hear George's heartfelt sign-off that makes Jules cry. It's a great emotional moment for the character, and Rebecca Ferguson does a tremendous job of delivering that. Then Jules looks at the Jane Carmody cleaning file and shows it to the other two. This time we hear her voice, and she says, The display in the cafeteria, people have to know, they have to see. And then Jules says, Allison's right, the display is a lie. And it zooms in to focus on that bird pattern that we saw reflected in Allison's glasses when she was watching the file. So yeah, this was a great way to set up the finale. Just a ton of character moments that they've been working towards throughout the season paying off here. We're at another point where most of my speculation of what might happen is related to things I know happened in the books. That's to say that there are quite a few different things that could go in different directions. Things I can't be sure about, which makes it all a lot more fun. The end of the episode is so emotional and so exciting that it almost makes you forget that there's literally nowhere for Jules to go once she leaves Kennedy's apartment. The hacker can hide where the drive currently is, and George's revelation about finding the door seems like it presents a possible way to escape, but there really shouldn't be any way that she would be able to make it to the down deep. They showed us that there's a travel ban with checkpoints. It's been established that there's a sheriff station down there, and we saw that Judicial has a presence there when they went to visit Walker, and so she can't just smash the cameras out on her way down the stairs. Still, based on what we've seen, it feels fairly certain that one of two things will happen. She will be caught, and then she'll be sent out to clean, 
or she'll make it back down there and go for the door and face her fear of water. I guess seeing the Jane Carmody cleaning video might have the same effect that it had on Allison, and she might not be afraid of going out, but considering that the hacker and Patrick have both seen it too, there's also a possibility that they could try to get that information out to everyone else, and then that would change things. I think the flashing keychain, or whatever we're calling that thing with the 18 on it, is the big WTF moment in this episode, but I have a pretty good idea of what's going on there. The things that I keep thinking about are one, what's going on with Sims and his wife. When I watched this episode the second time, all of their scenes and the decisions they make jumped out at me. There's really no analog for this in the book, so when I say I'm wondering if there's more to be revealed about this character, I'm really wondering what's going on there. The other thing is Billings. He left home ready to double down on keeping his secret and showing everybody he was a good guy by bringing Jules in. In pursuit of that, he saw the travel guide, which had an effect on him. But what does it mean that he destroyed it? I really have no idea where this character goes next, and I kind of laughed to myself whenever he saw the pact on the desk and immediately put it in the drawer. This is the second episode in a row that Adam Bernstein directed, and since the other episodes were shot in blocks, I assume that means he'll be the director of the finale. I feel like that's a good sign. This last run of episodes has been really strong. And one thing that jumped out at me again in this episode is how cool the sets are. The apartments all look unique and they look lived in, but also claustrophobic in a way that you'd never notice if you grew up in one of them. Rebecca Ferguson and Tim Robbins are both a joy to watch. They're both earning their paychecks. And as I've mentioned, Chinaza Uche is killing it as Billings. But then even some of the minor characters like his wife and Sims's wife have really made the most out of their limited screen time, which really adds to the overall quality. I guess as we near the end, what stands out the most is the way everything is fitting together. As a book reader, I can get distracted by what I think should happen, what I anticipate seeing, and then I'm left wondering why they made different changes. And at the end of this episode, it feels like they knew what they wanted to do and are pulling it off. I can't wait to see how they wrap things up, and I think that's a great place to leave things. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.